Now we're going to move on and hopefully this will work. We're going to have a brief presentation virtually from Dr. Lindy Van Niekirk from the University of Cape Town, the Bertha Center for Social Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Van Niekirk is a medical doctor with a master's in public health. She's worked across various levels of the South African public health system. In the past three years, she's designed and implemented a body of work on inclusive health innovation at the University of Cape Town. She established the first health innovation lab in an African public health sector hospital in Cape Town. She's a leading member in the Social Innovation and Health Initiative, and she's also reached multiple innovative healthcare models, a research, I'm sorry, multiple innovative healthcare models across South Africa. Lindy has been pursuing a journey to better understand the role that grassroots social innovation can play to transform the challenges faced by developing country healthcare systems. So she's going to present uh, from South Africa, catalyzing on the social innovation in an academic institution. Lindy, go ahead, please. Great. Thank you very much. Um, does that sound okay? Yeah. Everyone here? Yes, it sounds okay. Thank you so much. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to join, even from being quite far away. Um, this is at least the, the wonder of innovative technology to help us to do so. So I'm sitting here at the, at the tip of Africa today, um, and it's a pleasure to be able to share with you just a few of our experiences um, in starting up social innovation within our university and also extending it beyond the reach of our of our university, and it's been a pleasure um, meeting Luis Gabriel um, last year and, and working quite closely with them on our social innovation and health initiative, um, a partnership with WHO. And yes, he definitely has a lot of energy. I think that that can lead to a lot um, in your meeting today, and I'm sure he's um, brought a lot of like-minded people along. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'd like to give you just a bit of background about our country, ourselves as the university, and, and how we've been seeing social innovation. Um, share three of the principles that we've really found has helped us in building momentum, um, and then just a little bit of our lessons and, and experiences in doing so. So this quote really rings true in South Africa. Um, we are continuously faced with a series of great opportunities that are brilliantly disguised as insoluble problems. And by looking at our country, um, we started off with a great hope in 1994 at the end of the apartheid regime and with our first democratic elections, where we saw one of the most peaceful transitions um, an African country has seen. Unfortunately, over the years, a lot has improved in South Africa, but for many people living here, um, the social challenges are ripe, um, and some of them include poverty, um, where we've got a country where, which is one of the most inequitous in the world. We've got 22% of our country living in extreme poverty, um, and 53% of our population affected overall by poverty. Um, unemployment is growing um, daily from 25%, according to official figures, to close to 63% among our youth. And when it comes to considering health care, even these social determinants are responsible for a lot of the issues that we're facing within our health care system. Um, as many other developing countries, it's an overburdened system um, where South Africa spends a significant proportion, 8.8% .8 of its GDP, on health care. But yet, we're struggling to, to serve the vast amount of people that we need to care for, where 80 percent of our population is dependent on 40 percent of our resources provided through government funding. This, along with the quadruple burden of disease, um, the, the vast HIV numbers as South Africa is famous for, we do have the largest antiretroviral program in the world with 4 million people on it, as well as a rising burden of non-communicable disease. So within our health space and um, there are multiple either problems that will depress us or rich opportunities for us to think innovatively. And this is really what we've seen as, a, as an opportunity as a university. Um, the University of Cape Town is one of the oldest universities, first started in, officially in 1918, and has really grown over the years um, to have a student body of 26,000 students um, that's really active and passionate across all all spheres um, of society. 
for, you know, for us as a university, one of the strategic goals is really to contribute to um, South Africa's development challenges. And this has become a, a key theme across the university. We do have multiple faculties, um, six different faculties, and we are located at the Graduate School of Business, a postgraduate institution um, located actually in the heart of Cape Town's tourist area um, at the V&A waterfront, which for any of you who visit it will realize that it's hardly the most representative area of South Africa, and yes, hence even more important for us to extend our reach um, into our communities. The Graduate School of Business has been headed by um, Professor Walter Bates, who's our director, and he's really brought a vision to the school about transforming it into a business school that is relevant to the context. Um, I think his vision has really led us to see the creation of two centers for social innovation at the school, um, the Bertha Center for Social Innovation Entrepreneurship, as well as the MTN Solution Space. And it is really from within the, the School of Business that even myself as a medical doctor have found a home um, to start addressing some of the pressing healthcare delivery challenges faced in South Africa, where a vast um, number of our, uh, researchers across our university have been focusing on drugs, devices, and vaccine development. We've identified the opportunity to really focus on healthcare delivery innovation and drive that as one of our key focus areas from within the Bursa Center. So how do we think about social innovation? For many of you, these definitions won't be, won't be anything new, and yet it is, for us, it's really on two levels. So social innovation helps us to find solutions to some of these challenges, um, especially within our healthcare system, as I've explained. But really, the, the dimension of social innovation that really excites us as a university um, is around its ability to really change the basic routines, resources, authority flows, and beliefs of any social system. And this is a time in South Africa where negative news, uh, news um, coverage is often growing. Um, we've got, had multiple student uprisings, um, as some of you may have seen in, in the news recently, and it's becoming more pressing for us to not just come up with a, the innovative products and, and processes, but really to start addressing some of the hard issues resulting in them um, across all systems. And I think it's seeing it as a way to restore and bring transformation to our society. So for us, it's a mindset. It's one where we look, see possibilities instead of our problems, where we really try and focus on the strengths within all levels um, of society and whoever that may be, where we try and adopt a process that allows us to co-create solutions instead of a more patriarchal, um, or colonized approach of developing solutions for people, but rather doing it with them. And finally, allowing us to address, as I've mentioned, the external institutions, um, which is us as a university, our healthcare system, our education system, um, but also the, the internal institutions, which is how we think about our challenges. So in catalyzing social innovation, one of the key um, elements is really around having the courage to do so. And as a university, it's taken, um, I would say, about six years for us to get a momentum and a body of work going. And it's been led by some really courageous and, and um, pioneers who've been willing to put themselves out on the line to change from what the past has been, to change from what the current has been, and to really bring a new way of thinking and being into our future. Um, as a way for us as a university, but also as a country, to move forward. So three of the principles that I'd love to share with you. Um, the first is really about extending an inclusive invitation um, to people within society. Um, that has entailed us thinking around how do we bring social innovation to our graduate students, to our undergraduate students, as well as opening the doors of our business school um, to our local communities and especially to our health community, um, being that policy makers, um, business leaders, people from across the nonprofit sectors to really get together and discuss some of these problems that we're facing, but also the ways in which we could be solving them. Um, I'd like to show you a, a quick video about one of our master's programs, which would really explain, I think, the vision that our directors had for the school um, and how it's been one of the ways in which we've embarked on social innovation. Louisa, would you guys be able to show the video on, on your side? 
One second, please. Thank you. One second, Lindy. Uh, Thank you. It's coming. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to find out a bit more about the world outside of Nepal. Get out of that this review space. We entirely too much are looking for fake solutions to not real problems. This is a town with the highest Gini coefficient in the world, which is indicates the big is Gini coefficient. Get out of that classroom desk review space. We entirely too much are looking for fake solutions to not real problems. This is the town with the highest Gini coefficient in the world, which is the coefficient that indicates the biggest difference between poor and rich. There's a niceness to having to experience that dialectic daily, because you are almost reminded daily that these worlds could be shifted so easily in a short space of time of short distances. We sought the need for a program to try and facilitate all of these development dimensions, but at the same time give them the courage and the confidence to work with big ideas. One of the reasons why I'm doing an inclusive innovation is that I'd like to find out a bit more about uh, discoveries, innovations, about new technology, new processes. What I think is important about an info is that even though it's at master's level, in some way you're feeding the production of new thinking as opposed to just consuming a curriculum. The course is really based on four key words. It's knowing, doing, being, and becoming. We far too used to only educating the mind, but the interaction between doing, thinking, reasoning, and the tactile experience of that is Africa is moving away and has to move away from charity. And that is what you're trying to do with the sport. You're trying to support those people that have an idea and to build up in such a way that it's absolutely charity independent. You have to find real solutions for real people. Now, in order to find it and to know that there's a real solution, you'll have to test it, you'll have to focus on it. So that is where the action learning comes in. So we want students to build their perfect app, go out, try it, and see how people react. I got the idea that uh, as patients were moving from one clinic to the next, they weren't able to take their records with them. And I thought, you know, that's quite a waste, given that you're in such a resource in the setting. So my project focuses on introducing mobile payments into the informal economy. Do a very explorative study of informal traders in Cape Town. The synergies here are amazing. A nice tension in the class that keeps you thinking and that keeps you kind of questioning what you think and that helps you observe yourself. We shouldn't be educating business people, we shouldn't be educating history makers, or people who can disclose whole new worlds. I think this is what we try to do. The benefit of having an inclusive innovation course like this grounded at a place such as the Graduate School of Business, which is a premier African business school, is that we are able to take the best of both things in order to make uh, two different more than just one.
you're back with us. Great. Thank you very much for showing that. I think it, it really was just as a way of illustrating, I think, a little bit of our context um, to anyone who's not been to, in, to Cape Town, but also about how we've opened the doors at the business school to think um, not only about business students who's been trained to go into corporate, but really open it to doctors, engineers, um, people from all fields of society to gain an innovation, um, knowledge and skills that will enable them to address some of the challenges that we're facing in society. One of our second programs before we move on is the UCT Upstart program, which again is an extension of our business school, collaborating with all the faculties across our university. Um, where everyone can't have the luxury to do a separate degree within innovation, we've designed this 20-week pop-up curriculum um, that start, got started on the UCT main campus last year to really give our younger students the ability to think innovatively, design businesses that could actually address some of the social and health-related issues. Um, and this this program gave um, a lot of younger the younger generation an ability to be job creators and problem solvers and really help them reframe their mindsets of, of how they think about South Africa. A second key area for us, um, which we've had to do as a university in order to embrace social innovation, has been really about reframing the mandate of a university. Um, developing research, training, masters and PhD students is all part and parcel of, of being in, a, an, in an academic institution. But for us to address some of the issues that have been faced, it, was, it has been important for us to extend our reach really into society and leave our business school um, and go to two areas, which is really um, the kind of heart of what we see within Cape Town in South Africa. If I could maybe just start with, with Philippi Township, um, it's a low-income community on the Cape Flats, home to about 200,000 people. Um, which boasts with some of the highest rates of unemployment, um, poor education, and poor health care within its setting. Currently, the university is actually opening a satellite campus within Philippi, along with a big 1,000-square-meter development um, in partnership with the leading foundation to help address some of these issues, um, to foster entrepreneurship and innovation with members of the local community um, in order to address and, and help uplift the community. A second example of, of where we've really had to stretch what we're doing at a university is, is moving into the health system, that healthcare can't change um, from sitting without, and we've always been passionate about driving a culture of innovation right within the center of our health system. So in 2014, we started a partnership with Crudiscare Hospital, which is our leading academic hospital in Cape Town, um, that has over 3,000 staff members and 800 hospital beds. Um, the hospital is, has been famous over the years for having done the first heart transplant in 1967. And hence, building on this legacy, it's been important to say it's not only scientific innovation that's required, but also innovation in service delivery, addressing some of the organizational and operational challenges um, and not waiting for policymakers, senior leaders to do so, but really putting the power and the agency and the capacity within the hands of our frontline staff. Um, Louisa, may I ask if you could show the second video, please? Uh, today is a real um, highlight for us that after three months of working closely with several teams across this hospital, we've been able to showcase 17 different innovative ideas. Um, this project started last year in July already, where we spent an in-depth time scoping the challenges experienced by our frontline health workers in this hospital. We conducted over 70 interviews, trying to understand from each of them what are the problems they're facing in delivering care. I think it's really important to 
when we decide to intervene or come up with ways to better our world and develop solutions, that we do it with the people involved. The, those who work here in the hospital understand the challenges and the context best, better than anyone from the outside can. So it's really exciting to see how motivated people are, how they've been able to lift their spirits um, beyond just the challenges of their work every day. Basically, I've come up with a pill box, a medication pill box, um, which is not only a storage device, but it's to help patients become more educated about the illnesses and what medications they are taking and why. So the idea is the development of the mobile referral app. And um, this stems from the fact that um, we take two kinds of uh, referrals in cardiology. Firstly, outpatient uh, referrals, which are less urgent, and we give uh, the referring doctors and patients an elective appointment. I thought there were a huge number of really exciting projects. Um, I was hugely impressed by the diversity of the people uh, presenting the project today. There were people from human resources, there were nurses, uh, there were doctors. Um, so it was hugely encouraging to see that the, the unit had managed to reach out to all those different parts of the hospital. It was an exciting need to see uh, staff of this hospital put forward their ideas, to be asked to put forward their ideas, and really respond in positive, creative, and very structured ways. I would encourage our staff to also come up with ideas. It shows that staff have the knowledge, they have the expertise, and they are the ones who can actually solve their own problems. So I would encourage other staff to also come up with new ideas, and we as management will try to support the staff as much as possible. Right, thank you very much. That that video was, was done um, about 12 months ago, and currently we've been through a, through the process with the, the staff members. Uh, Ten solutions have been, has been developed, um, and it's been really encouraging to see even new research streams emerging from that, where we haven't been pushing health services research um, within the local setting, and this has really enabled that to be done. Um, the program is also working very closely with our Western Cape Provincial Department of Health, showing them as a, as a government department how innovation can be created in a safe way um, to help foster new ideas and challenges that even they were trying to solve on a daily basis. So the third principle that we've really had to embrace as a university is to move out of, to include other people, to move out of the university, but then also to create nurturing spaces for innovation. Um, the first space is the solution space, which was part of where our master's program in inclusive innovation happens, but it is also a space that allows young entrepreneurs, people from the community, from our business school to meet, think about creative ideas, and work together. Our second space linked to our program at the hospital is right in the center of the hospital, very strategically placed. Um, and as the staff would often say, they see it as a home from the mental iron cage. So these spaces have really helped them to get away from the day-to-day -day stresses of, of just dealing with delivering healthcare, have an opportunity to pause, to be inspired, to be filled with hope again, um, and really to experiment with new solutions. Um, even more exciting, it's really helped us foster the multidisciplinary collaboration that we require across the hospital and across the health system. Um, and it's become a place of forming new connections and new relationships um, across the sector. But it's not, it hasn't always been easy. Um, there's been many barriers along the way and hurdles to overcome. And looking back on the experiences that we've had, um, I'm sure we could have been better prepared for, for some of them. But I think through it all, it's important to remember that it's not organizations or systems who innovate, but really us as people. And with that, there often lies the biggest, the biggest barrier. Um, we've, innovation has a way of um, being, instilling fear within people. It's all to do with the new, the unknown, the unseen. 
Um, and often that fear results in senior leaders responding by trying to control um, and put restrictions instead of actually releasing some of the bureaucratic structures that could be stifling it. So we've really had to work with everyone from, from senior people within the university to those within the healthcare system to really show them what the innovation process looks like and to trust the process um, and not necessarily need to depend on the outcome before anything has gotten started. Um, it's also allowed us to really, through the centers that we've established at the university, to create a sense of legitimacy, as well as through some of the programs that we've run that's made it um, safe, um, accepted, and encouraged, and permitted to actually innovate. But to some of the benefits, irrespective of how hard the challenge may be at times to, to drive new programs, new structures um, through a, an old academic institution, it really has enabled us to unlock potential far beyond what we could have imagined, to see young students coming up with ideas um, and being generators of a new future for themselves, to seeing nurses who've never believed that they actually have the opportunity to affect change within the healthcare system, suddenly start seeing themselves as real active role players um, in creating a different um, outcome for their patients. One of the examples that's really been a, a leading one for us is the Social Innovation Health Initiative, which has been a partnership with us at the business school, Oxford University, and with TDR at the World Health Organization. And through this collaborative partnership between business schools and, and the WHO, we've been able to drive a, a global South initiative, researching social innovations within healthcare delivery, um, generating an evidence agenda to strengthen the field and also working together to think about how we could capacitate other healthcare systems um, to drive innovation within. Um, so it's been an exciting initiative that's really brought um, new partners along. Um, the, our innovation efforts have further really helped change our role um, in our local community from being a, a business school only for for a subset of the population to being one whose doors are open, um, whether you're coming from a township area in Cape Town, whether you come from a hospital, whether you're a teacher, you are welcome at a business school. Um, even if you can't do a formal program, you can attend a course, a workshop, or an event. And it's really enabled us to diversify a lot of funding streams beyond traditional research grants and work with amazing partners that helps us extend our reach. And maybe just to, to end off, um, I think, as I've alluded to before, what innovation is really about for us is about reframing how, how people see South Africa. Um, increasingly, we've got negative reports coming up. Our currency is weakened. Um, our issues are escalating. Violence is, is ripe. But yet, within all of that, there's opportunities for us to bring change. And although we require a vast amount of solutions to address those problems, um, we also require our systems to change, whether it's the healthcare system, the education system, the academic system in which we're operating in. But more than anything else, it's changing the, the internalized institutions in how each of us think, believe, see ourselves and our role and contribution that we could make. So I think this last quote really um, captures for us what innovation is. It's about renovating the depths of people, social structures, so that they can actually be transformed and justice can roll down like water. Thank you.